Hi, my name is Meg Hitchcock. I'm an artist who works with text, and I live in Brooklyn. Tell us about your relationship with words. Um, with words, well, I've, um, it's, my work isn't just any words, it's sacred text. I don't know if you were, um, if you knew that about the work, but I'm not just taking, um, I'm taking the word of God and I'm uh, deconstructing the word of God and um, I call it cross-pollination of all these different sources of the word of God. So it may be the Bible, maybe the Torah, um, or the Quran, and I'm taking the text of one and I'm cutting it up letter by letter and I'm turning it into another text. And so when you ask me my relationship to the word, it's actually the word of God, which I, um, I take pretty seriously. Like if, if there's a book that calls itself the word of God, I believe it. I don't try to analyze it to see if it's true. I just assume that it is. And so my relationship to that is um, pretty intimate. I mean, it's definitely a part of my upbringing and part of my past. I have deep roots in, in uh, the Christian religious tradition. Okay. Classify your work as typography. Typography itself is a very broad genre. Would you even consider yourself a typographer? I don't call myself a type, typographer, no. I, I, my work happens to fit into all these different arenas because it could be type. I was just in a show in March that was called, um, it was about mystics, so artists who are working with sort of a spiritual context. I've also been in shows that are about having OCD. And so, um, you know, the obsessive thing, I, I don't feel like any of those, um, they're all kind of funny, but they don't really relate to what I do. What I do, I, I'm really just approaching my work as an artist and I'm creating these images that are um, very formal in a lot of aspects. I have a lot of training in formalism, classicism. Um, the, the composition is really important to me. The line is really important to me. That's why I, I call them text drawings because it's all about the line and how the line flows around the page. So a typographer, um, Sure, because <laughs> I love I love the beauty of the text, the beautiful font in the um, in the as the pages as they yellow, like in uh, used books. Um, I love going to used bookstores and finding sacred books that um, have a lot of, of yellow in the pages. Th those are perfect for what I do. Your text work, we'll call it, it has a tremendous amount of symbolism and mm -hmm. quite a strong message. Uh, how do you determine which text you use for each piece? Well, like I said, anything that calls itself the Word of God is, I just consider it the Word Basically of God. And so that's... Usable in your book. It's, yeah, it's, it's fodder for my work. So those are my, most of my materials, that and glue in an exacto way. And um, I, I just cut up each book by letter by letter. And I, I choose two books though. I, I cut up one book to create another. And those two, those two books have some parallel. It, it's usually there's a similarity, but sometimes there's a, um, it's by contrast. Like I created once this beautiful Buddhist prayer um, by cutting the letters from the Book of Mormon. Okay. And um, wow. one is very ethereal and poetic and beautiful, and the other one's very rock solid. And oh, wow. uh, this, the, thus spoke the Lord. So <laughs> I, I like the contrast of those two. So. How important is the configuration of the text that you use? The shapes? Yeah. Uh, some of them is pretty important. I, um, it, de it definitely directly relates to the piece itself. Um, on some of them, it just is, is more ethereal. The thing is, I don't. I usually don't control where the type goes. It's, it's a continuous line of type that I'm putting down without, without spaces, without punctuation. Um, and so, and it winds around the page, like it never stops. And so I don't really um, have much control over where it goes. I mean, I know that sounds weird because I, obviously I do control it, but I let the line dictate to me what is, where it's going to go. And um, um, so it's, it's really important to me because the shape that's created and then the negative shape that's created from that is what the piece is uh, visually about, is the composition of the piece. How is the significant undertone, the significance of the religious undertone in your work? Uh, it's very significant. It's, um, it's what drives me to do the work because it's, um, 
The work that I do is really tedious and boring and sometimes, and sometimes it's very blissful. But um, there's something that keeps me going when I'm really bored out of my mind. And that is the message behind it is that I'm, I'm taking the word of God, I'm deconstructing it, examining it, and basically pointing beyond specifics, uh, beyond the Bible, beyond the Quran, um, to a larger presence, which people call God, consciousness, or whatever. Um, that's what my work is about, is sort of undermining the idea of, of specificity when it comes to God, and really um, showing that God is not one thing. He's not just Allah. It's not Jehovah. It's not Jesus. It's, um, they are all pointing toward what God is. It's also, my work is a, a celebration of the human experience because there's one thing that we all seem to share, which is the need to, um, to make sense of our reality. And to do that, we tend to reach outside of our reality. And so whether we created God or whether God created us is to me insignificant. What's interesting is that we have this commonality of we all seem to need it, it or him. Yeah. Um, humans seem to need God. They always have in order to explain uh, what are the, the troubles they're going through or just to make sense of their lives. It's, like, it's actually very surprising that you're a religious person. Someone might look at your work and say that you are actually the exact opposite. Well, I'm not religious because religious to me is more of a political system okay. or more of a social system. Whereas I, I, you know, I don't even want to call myself spiritual because it sounds pretty pretentious. <laughs> um, I'm not an atheist. How about that? Okay. <laughs> I know I'm not an atheist, and um, but I have absolutely no idea of what God or consciousness is. And I think that anyone that claims that they do, and then someone who really makes systems out of it, is it's nuts. Yeah. It's really crazy as far as I'm concerned that um, the institutions that have been created out of Christianity, which um, are really were used and are still used to rule the masses. So that's to me what religion is, and my work is undermining religion. Um, and I'm perfectly fine with atheism. In fact, some people, um, atheists who have seen my work really like it. I'm not sure why, but they seem to really resonate with them because it's sort of by by bringing in, by accepting all gods, you're basically saying that there are no gods. And there's yeah. just this presence, which, um, you know, there, it's without explanation. It can't be explained. What is your general approach to a piece? Um, well, from start to finish, I, I, I have an idea of two texts to bring together because they're similar. Lately, I've been working a lot with the Bible and the Quran, um, just because there's so much tension built into that. And uh, so the piece from the, from the outset, before I've even laid a single letter down, I know that there's going to be some tension in the piece. And um, so I'll either cut up the Bible to create a passage from the Quran or vice versa. And um, I find passages that resonate with each other or, or are pointing toward the same thing. And then, um, and then I figure out what, what I wanted, what size in the format. I'm starting to work larger. And then, um, Pieces like this are obviously sketched in advance, but the other ones, like this behind you, I, I just start at the bottom and I work my way up. And um, over weeks and months of doing it, it um, the line takes its own shape. Um, so my process is really just coming here and putting in the hours because it takes so long to do it. Wow. Yeah. How long does it usually take you a piece on average? On average, how long does? Um, an average. Good question, because I work in so many different sizes, but I'd say an average of a month. But a big piece like that is going to take um, a couple, of, at least two months. And the piece that you saw upstairs, the biggest one, I started that in 2009. Wow. <laughs> and I just finished it, but it, it's, it's not because I've been working on it straight. It was just, um, it's the entire book of Revelation, and so it took a really long time. And it's, the, it's the entire book? It's the entire book, the one that has yeah. the horns. Yeah. And, um, and I cut the letters from the Quran. So um, it was really tedious, but I did finally finish it this year. So. Uh, are there any notable influences besides religion that work their way into your work? Any, mm, any artists? Um, any artists you're influenced by? Any outside? No, besides I. Besides religion? 
I, I really, I'm, my approach is just by nature fairly, pretty classical. I studied art and um, I studied in Italy for a year. And so uh, my, my references are, are pretty classical in nature and my, the formal aspects of my work, like the line, um, is very classical um, in the compositions. But specific artists, no, I can't really say that, that um, I have, I can think of anyone that, I, that comes to mind. I'm just starting to understand more about um, artists who work with type, and so I'm looking into those, but I don't have any that come to mind. Okay. You also paint, correct? Not anymore. Not anymore? No. <laughs> I painted for uh, like 20 some odd years and um, moved to New York, and after being here for a year or so, I realized that I had nothing else to say with paint. And um, it was like learning to play an instrument and getting pretty good at it and then realizing that this wasn't the instrument wow. that you wanted to play. It's like, okay, well now what? <laughs> but I started working with type, so. Yeah. Do, you miss, do you miss painting at all? I do sometimes. I miss color. And I'm trying to find a way to incorporate color, but I haven't found a way yet that makes sense. It would feel too forced, so. Where do you see your work going, being that you evolved did you evolve from painting into type? Do you see your work evolving any further? Or where do you see the type going if you? Well, I, you know, I really don't know. I mean, the, the jump from, type, from paint to type was huge. I mean, I never would have seen this coming. If anyone had told me that I was going to move to New York and stop painting and start working with type, I, it would have blown my mind. So who knows? Maybe I, I think I'll continue. Um, I'd like to do installation work. I did do one installation um, last year, and it was um, really, really tedious to do. This. And so I wouldn't do that again without assistance and a really big stipend. <laughs> because with installation, at the end, I, I scraped it off the walls. And this is that famous accountant's gallery in Bushwick. Um, I scraped it off the walls, and that was it. And, and this, this, is, this is it. Um, I can find it. Oh, sorry. I scraped it off the walls and this is what's left of the installation. Oh, wow. And it's like, okay, that was like a, over a month. That was like three months worth of work. It looks like so, you got almost shaved. Yeah, <laughs> that's the book of Revelation. Um, the letters are cut from the Quran. So. What do you want for your audience to take away from your work? Um, I, you know, the concept behind my work is what's important to me, which is um, an examination of the, the um, I would say the prison cell, which people find themselves locked into by following uh, religion that they haven't questioned and really looked at deeply. Because you can spend your whole life um, confined by thinking a certain way or believing a certain way, and if you never examine those beliefs, uh, what a shame. Because you may find, if you examine them, that they're actually um, imprisoning you rather than setting you free. So I'm not trying to change anyone. I'm not trying to change Muslims because I actually think that um, uh, Islam provides a really beautiful path. But there may be another path, or may, maybe there's just a pathless path, which is basically which I follow. Um, I think that paths, spiritual paths, are really dangerous because they're just um, there's so many mind traps, and if you can set yourself free from those, it's really pretty beautiful. The human experience can be really beautiful. So it'd be great if someone took that away from my work. I, you know, I, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but that would be my goal.